Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 4.3, Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring. But before we get to solving quadratic equations, we are going to write a quadratic equation in standard form with 1 half and negative 5 as roots or solutions. So how do we go about this problem? Well, we are going to make two sets of parentheses and throwing x in front of those two sets of parentheses and then we just go minus whatever those roots are. So it's going to be x minus 1 half and then x minus a negative 5. Now when we have fractions, whatever is in the bottom of the fraction, go ahead and take that number. So it's 2. I'm going to take that number times both things in that parenthesis or in that set of parentheses. So now I have 2x minus 1 because 2 times 1 half is 1. And then go up and go ahead and clean that second set up. So then it's just going to be x plus 5. And since we are writing an equation, we set this equal to 0. Now once you did all the hard work, all you have to do is multiply everything out. So let's take this 2x times the x to get 2x squared, the 2x times the 5 to get plus 10x, the negative 1 times the x to get negative x, and the negative 1 times the 5 to get negative 5, still equaling 0. S uh, simplify the stuff in the middle, then we have 2x squared plus 9x minus 5 equaling 0. And so we just wrote our quadratic equation in standard form with this variable being the biggest, second biggest, and no variable right here. Now, before we get into actually solving the quadratic equations, I want to give you the uh, zero product property that lets us solve the way we do it. So it states for any real numbers a and b, if a times b equals zero, then a equals zero, or b equals zero, or both of them equals zero. Or in other words, you have your two factors that equal zero. You can say x plus three equals zero, or x minus. 5 equals 0. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Now with number 1, we have to remember way back when to chapter 0. How do we solve these guys? Well, we solve these by seeing what can we take out of 9y squared and 3y. We can only take out what's in common out of those numbers. Well, what's the biggest number that goes into 9 and 3? I know a 3 does, and how about the letters? We can also take out a y then what do we have left? Remember, when you factor things out, it's like you're dividing them out. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. y squared divided by y is y. Then 3y divided by 3y is 1, set equal to 0. Now, since it's equal to 0, we have to set both things equal to 0. So it's 3y equals 0, and 3y plus 1 equals 0. We solve for both. Here we divide by 3, so y equals 0. 0 divided by anything is still 0. Here we subtract the 1 over, so 3y equals a negative 1. Divide by 3, y equals a negative 1 third. So now we have two solutions. y equals negative 1 third, and y equals 0. Here with number 2, same situation. What can we take out of both? I can take out a 5a. It's the biggest number I can take out. 5a squared divided, divided by 5a is a. And then negative 20a divided by 5a is a negative 4. And then set that equal to 0. Now since we have two multiples, let's set them both equal to 0. 5a equals 0. a minus 4 equals 0. Divide by 5, a equals 0. Add the 4 over, a equals 4. Two answers, perfect. Now let's try some more. When we have three terms, when we have three terms, we want to multiply to the number and add up to the single variable x, right? So we multiply to the last guy, add up to the one in the middle. So we start with factors of 9 that add up to 6. Well, I know 3 and 3 multiply to 9, and but we want them to add up to a negative 6, so they both have to be negative. Now we go and say x minus 3 times x minus 3. We put our factors in parentheses, set them equal to 0. You did the hard part, now just set both things equal to 
0. So it's x minus 3 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. Here we add the 3 over, so it's x equals 3. We add the 3 over here, it's x equals 3. So we have just one solution here where x equals 3. Now if it doesn't equal 0, we want it to equal 0, correct? So let's subtract that 15 over to get x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Then we want factors of negative 15 that add up to a negative 2. Well, factors of 15 I know are 3 and 5. Is there any way that we can manipulate these numbers to add up to a negative 2? Well, what if I make the 5 negative? Well, negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. If I add them both up, that would make a negative 2. So let's go ahead and put these numbers in our parentheses. So it's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 5. Set that equal to 0. Then we have x plus 3 equals 0 x minus 5 equals 0. Solve for x. Here we subtract the 3 over x equals a negative 3. Here we add the 5 over x equals 5. So we have two solutions, x equals 5 and x equals a negative 3. Next one for number 5. Notice how we do not have a single x term. Well, let's put a single x term in there and go x squared plus 0 x minus 64 equals 0. Here it's the same situation. We need factors that multiply to a negative 64 and add up to a 0. So factors of negative 64, we have 8 and 8. They add up to 0. One of these guys has to be negative, so negative 8 plus 8 add up to 0. So we go ahead and drop those in your parentheses. So it's x minus 8 times x plus 8 equals 0, x minus 8 equals 0, x plus 8 equals 0. Here we add over the 8, x equals 8. Here we subtract the 8 over, x equals a negative 8. Two solutions, good to go on number 5. Now with 6, whenever we have a number right here in front of the 3, or in front of our x squared term, let's see if we can take any numbers out of the whole equation. If I cannot take any numbers out, I'm going to drop that 3 in front of both parentheses and I'm going to attach whatever variable is to it. And no, notice how I'm only attaching one variable to it, only one x. Now after you do that part, we have to take the first guy or the first number times the last number or the number attached to the x squared times the single number. And so now we get 30. Now we are looking for factors of 30 that add up to 17. Well, I know factors of 30 are 2 and 15. I go ahead and, and they also add up to 17. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the 2 and the 15 in my parentheses and set them both equal to 0. But since we dropped 3x, in both parentheses, I have too many 3x's, so I have to take one of those 3's out. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to divide one out that I can take the 3 out. Can I take the 3 out here? No. How about here? Yes, I can, so I'm going to divide out 3. I'm going to be left with x plus 5. And then here is still going to be the same. It's still going to be 3x plus 2. We set that equal to 0. Set it equal to zero, set both equal to zero and solve. So it's 3x plus 2 equals 0. The other one is x plus 5 equals 0. Solving, subtract over the 5, so x equals a negative 5 here. This guy we subtract over the 2, so 3x equals a negative 2. Divide by 3 to get x equals negative 2 thirds. Number 7. First thing we look at, does it equal 0? No, it does not. So I have to subtract it over. So we have 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 equals 0. Now with this 2 in front of the x squared term, is there anything that we can take out of all our numbers? No, there is not. So then I go ahead and drop 2x in front of both sets of parentheses and set it equal to 0. 
then I have to take that 2 times the number in the back to get a negative 18. Now I'm looking for factors of negative 18 that add up to a negative 3. So I know 6 and 3 multiply to 18, but which one has to be negative? Since it adds up to a negative number, I know the bigger one has to be negative, so I'm going to make this 6 negative. So I plug in both of those numbers. Just a second though, because we have two twos, we have to take a two out. So can I take a two out here? No, I cannot. But can I here? Yes, I can. I go ahead and divide by two here. So I get x minus three. Bring your other set of parentheses down, which is two x plus three. Set it equal to zero. Now you took out that two, so we can set both equal to zero. So it's 2x plus 3 equals 0, and then x minus 3 equals 0. We solve x equals 3 here, and for the blue guy, we subtract over the 3, so it's 2x equals a negative 3, divide by 2, x equals a negative 3 halves. Two answers here and there. So just a little refresher for our steps to factor with the number in front of your x squared term. Bring the first number down and the variable into both sets of parentheses. Then multiply the first term times the last term together. And then we need factors of that number that you did in step two that add up to the middle term. Put those factors in parentheses and then divide out a total factor of the number from step one. And the very last thing we have to factor here is number eight, which is this mess right here. But notice how it does not equal zero. When it does not equal zero, then we do not have to solve for. So what's that look like? Well, with four terms, I'm gonna to group together the like things. I'm gonna take these two and group them together. With this minus, I'm gonna include that minus with the four and then throw a plus sign right in the middle. So now let's factor the first set of parentheses. Is there anything that I can take out of here? Yes, there is. I can take out a total of four. How about a letter? Can I take out a letter? I can take out a C. What will be left? Four, or 16 divided by four is four. Uh, the C's are gone. Also, a G is left. 12 divided by four is three, so it's gonna be plus three. I took out that C, so I'm just left with F. Now in here, what can I take out? Since both of them are negative, I highly suggest that you take out a negative, so I'm gonna take out a negative. And I can also take out a D. Then I will be left with, in parentheses, negative four, but I took out that negative four, so it's gonna be a positive four G, and then a positive three F. Notice how both of these sets of parentheses are the same. So I'm gonna take them out and combine them into one. So it turns into 4g plus 3f. Now what did you have left over? What didn't you use? I have this 4c and minus d. So it's going to be 4c minus d for our factors. So now since it does not equal zero, this is what we are looking for. This, these two sets of binomials are our solution. And that does it for section 4.3, solving quadratic equations by factoring. Good day.